Manchester United going away to Burnley this weekend. Last year, tough, tough game. This year, probably even tougher because of the losses against Brighton and Spurs. The media is trying to suggest that this game, if Jose Mourinho loses it, he could be sacked as Manchester United manager. I don't think that's the case, but it's certainly, certainly a must-win game for Mourinho. So what I'm going to do in this, hopefully it's a little bit more engaging, going to run through what I think is my predicted 11, show you some tactics and maybe the players I would switch in and out. But I want to hear from you who you would start in this game against Burnley. And for me, Mourinho is going to make changes. We were pretty damn good in the first half against Tottenham, other than the fact that we couldn't finish. Lukaku missed an own goal, doesn't mean I think he's going to be dropped, but he missed an own goal. We had 10 shots, but we didn't score. Now, I hope that Mourinho sticks to the 5-3-2. Now, I'll be honest, I hope he sticks to the 5-3-2 for the remainder of the season. I think it suits this United squad more. I think it suits the players we've got. It doesn't leave Lukaku isolated. It has him playing alongside someone, whether that's Sanchez, Rashford or Martial. It's the part of the squad where Man United had the greatest strength in depth. But this is the team to the side of me, as you can see, that I would start. And there are plenty of changes. I'm going to start with the Hayer and goal. I don't need to explain that. He needs to have a sensational season for United to do anything this campaign. I'll be honest, he started it quite shaky, but he's been brilliant for five years. I'm not going to say anything against him, so hopefully he comes back to form in this game. Now in defence, I have made changes. I've kept Chris Smalling in the middle. I don't think Smalling played the best against Tottenham Hotspur. He made some fantastic interceptions, but defensively, actually to be fair, it was more Jones and it was more Herrera who were making the mistakes over Smalling. But I would keep him in the middle of Rojo and Bailly. Now, that is a hothead combo. I wouldn't play them alongside each other, but either side of Smalling, it should hopefully work. And you're looking at Rojo. He hasn't been fit, but he's going to return for the Burnley game. Phil Jones got injured against Spurs. He won't start. And if you look at the position of Rojo here, it was here in behind. That ball there that went in behind Rojo, sorry, that went in behind Jones, that was a big problem against Spurs. And I hope that if Rojo does come in, he can avoid that from happening. And with Luke Shaw being on the left-hand side, there's no real reason for Rojo to be storming forward. So Rojo should be able to hold his position in that back three alongside Smalling and Bay, And it should allow our full-backs to do what they do best and bomb forward. Because in this formation, Shaw and Valencia have the ability to play as wing-backs. Now, a big problem for Antonio Valencia against Spurs, well, you had Ander Herrera in this position where Eric Bay is just running all over the shop. I had no idea where he was playing for about half a game because he's a central midfielder, what he's not surprised to see him struggling in the centre-back role. But Bailly just needs to stay there and stay disciplined. Because Bailly, on his day, is a fantastic top-class defender. He's just got this streak in him, this mad streak, which makes you love him. When he gets it wrong, it makes you want to punch him in the face. And unfortunately, we've the penalty against Brighton, <sighs> Bailly needs to improve, man. This is his season to really do it. Uh, and Antonio Valencia is back in the team. I think he's much better geared to be a wing-back than he is a right-back. But Valencia needs to have somebody on the overlap, which is why I'm playing Jesse Lingard there on the right-hand side. I'll explain that in a bit. So he doesn't have to cross because he's even pony. But if we look at our player of the season so far, it's got to be Luke Shaw. Man, the amount of runs forward he has done this season, getting balls in through there, cutting back inside through there. He really has been fantastic in that left-back position. Uh, well, left wing-back, sorry. Uh, well, but he's playing the 5-3-2 anyway. And that is exactly why I want to see Shaw playing in this 5-3-2 formation. For me, it gets the most out of him. Now, as you can see, there's plenty of changes in midfield, and I want to explain these. I've put Fellaini in as a defensive midfielder, not because I want him there, but because I think Mourinho will play him there. This is arguably Mourinho's most important game as Manchester United manager, with all the pressure that he's got on him. What is he going to do? He's going to revert and rely on the players that he feels he can trust the most. And Fellaini is a player, like him or lump him, that will do exactly what Mourinho asked him to do. Won't run out of position, won't go anywhere apart from do exactly what Mourinho asked him to do. And that's why I think he'll play there, because Matic, he looked very leggy against Spurs. I don't think he'll be fit to start this game and play 90 minutes, but I might be wrong. And hopefully, I am wrong, because I prefer Matic to play there. i am also put Pogba and Lingard in midfield, switched it up. Now, we have Fred and Pogba playing there. Pogba was actually playing on the right-hand side, with Fred playing on the left-hand side. But it left Pogba in a really isolated position, out on the right wing. He hardly had the ball. He's trying to, he, he was trying to do crazy. He was trying to turn there, he was trying to turn there, he was trying to turn there, but he was isolated absolutely everywhere. I want Pogba to switch back and go to being the more aggressive and advanced of the midfield three. 
that's what I want Pogba to do. That's where you're going to get the best out of Pogba. It's what United need to do. Now, I'll put Lingard there on the right-hand side of midfield. He can play in a midfield three. Would I play Fred there? I think Fred was pretty good against Spurs. Maybe I'm being harsh by dropping him to the bench here, but let me know what you think in the comments. But I'm putting Lingard there because of his movement, simply because I want to play Sanchez and Lukaku up front together. And I don't want to drop Lingard from the team. For me, he was, he was United's best player against... Um, United's second best player, sorry, behind Shaw, against Spurs. His movement, he was playing in a position where he dropped deep here and he was spraying fantastic balls up there. He was making runs there. He was making runs everywhere. Lingard's movement is unrivaled in this Manchester United team. And that, for me, is why he's so important. That is why I would effectively force him into this midfield team because I don't want to drop him. Now, up front, Sanchez and Lukaku. Something I don't want to see from Sanchez is him dropping deep to effectively make it a midfield four, trying to run around here, trying to run over the ball. Sanchez, stay in your position. Stay up front and let Shaw come on the overlap there. Let Shaw get the crosses in the box to you and to Lukaku as well. I don't want Sanchez dropping too deep because it doesn't work. We need him and we need Lukaku staying in the box and relying on the midfield and the fullbacks to make the movement behind them. That is going to make the difference for United. Because we need strikers in the box. Sanchez, shit start to the season. Lukaku, shit start to the season. There's no other way to describe both of their performances so far. And you could quite easily drop Sanchez to the bench right there and bring Martial in. Again, I think he's had a shit start to the season. Or you could bring Rashford in. Again, he's had a shit start to the season. For me, I'm going to go for Sanchez and I'm going to go for Lukaku in this game. You could go for any of the four, but let me know who you would play in the comments below. But I want to see United stick to the 5-3-2 formation. For me, that's the most important thing. If we do that, I think we'll play so much better football this season. You saw it in that first half against Spurs, but we've just got to get that finishing. Lucas Moura had two shots against United, two on target, two goals. Clinical. Now, Lukaku last season was pretty clinical. Nearly got 30 goals. We need to get that Lukaku back. He was clinical at the World Cup with Belgium nine times out of 10. We need that Lukaku back. Mourinho relied on Lukaku so much last season, so did United, and why not? You want your number nine to be scoring the majority of the goals. But in that team, I see movement from Lingard and Pobre in midfield. I see a weak point in Fellaini in defensive midfield, but whether it's Fellaini or Matic or Pereira, I don't think there's a player there who's dominated in that position and can control it. But given the context of the game, I think Mourinho is going to rely on people he feels he can rely on. That's why I'm bringing Fellaini back in. That's why I put Rojo back in at left centre back in his first game back. He can't trust Jones, he's injured. He can't trust Lindelof. He again looks shit when he came off the bench against Spurs. And I'm putting Rojo in to change it because, let's be honest, his defence is a complete shambles. Luke Shaw aside, every player can improve. But let me know who you would start in your starting 11 against Burnley. That's mine. As always, if you're new to United People's TV, subscribe. Come on. And drop a like on the video as well. Take it easy.